Welcome to the CLS show. Marty again with you tonight. <laughs> One of the track owners, Brad. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. We got the races yeah. are officially underway. We're yes. a couple episodes in and we're talking about racing. Now, as we get into rolling into June, mm -hmm. almost there, right. we can say, hey, we got a couple of races into the season. Uh, yeah. How's the season started out so far? Snow sucked. Spring sucked. April was terrible. Um, <laughs> and we went, I, think, I don't think we even had a spring. It went right, right from winter to summer because it's now we're in Dan's garage here. It's 90 degrees outside today. I don't know how, I mean, we literally were here not that long ago. We had <laughs> snow outside yeah. and now we're talking about. Shovel or a path yeah. to get into the garage. Yeah. Um, but uh, ironically, yes, we, we opened uh, our show with the uh, school, uh, our season with the school bus race. Uh, that was in the middle of May. And we have a couple of weeks under our belt now uh, after that fact. And um, yeah, we're heading into the month of June now, looking great, so. Looking back at the school bus night, obviously it's always a fun night for you and just all the fans in the area. Some fans that barely ever come up to see the Lake Speedway, the reason why they're there is That's for the school buses. Very true. Um, good turnout, like normal. Good night. I know the weather played a little bit havoc, yeah. but I think the school bus racing all got in. And who was the big winner? Uh, St. Croix Central took the um, fastest bus race, and the school all the way over from the eastern side of the state, or, or actually they're probably central. <laughs> Lake Holcomb won the uh, Battle of the Buses. They uh, they avoided all the crashes, whatever else. But uh, St. Croix Central and Chisago and Frederick and Luck and um goodness new richmond uh unity uh, i'm sure i'm gonna miss out some some guys here but just put on a fantastic show a lot of a lot of guys were having fun it was i mean all the drivers came out on the skate were ha having a great time so and all the kids had a great time too so um you were right though the the weather did play into that um that day we were uncertain earlier that morning chris and i have sat on the phone uh early that morning <laughs> And we were just scratch, scratching our heads because we were like, I, we did not expect to get that much rain overnight at all because the forecast didn't call for it, and neither did our apps on our phones. So just goes to show you, you can't always trust those things. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, we had a great uh, great sh uh, showing, even though we had a lot of weather in the morning and it did rain. It even rained a little bit during the event. I mean, it mm -hmm. did kind of sprinkle a little bit, but um, nobody uh, mind, minded that much, and we just kept on pushing through. And kudos to the uh, Midwest Modifieds and the Superstocks because they were kind enough, um, and they understood, obviously, that you know the school bus race is, is a special event for the schools and for the kids that come and the fans. And so uh, we actually um, pushed off their features to the next following week So in order to get the school bus races yeah. in. Which you guys did. And then speaking of the school bus race, so now you can go to the CLS show, like and subscribe, yeah. and there's uh, highlights from yeah. the school bus race and racing on the CLS show. Yeah. And yeah, we fast forward to you guys the following week, you got the double features in for the uh, super stocks and then for the Midwest mods. And then you added yeah. the late models and the yeah. modifieds and the USA late models. And yeah. I think USM and uh, the UMSS wing sprint cars. That is correct. Right too. Yes. Which one of our former uh, guests here recently, Chase V Brock. Yeah. He picked up the win. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Too, yep. So, yep. Along with a couple other Obviously, a handful of different winners, yep. which we can talk about a little bit later on sure. if we'd like to. But uh, fast forward to last weekend. It's the night that uh, everyone gets in free. Yeah. Bring in everyone out. Pack the track. Have all these fun fans that if they don't get to spend the weekend at the cabin or on the boat or just right. looking for something to do, they can show up and hang out at Cedar Lake Speedway. And yep. uh, uh, beautiful Saturday night last Saturday. Yeah, it was, it was gorgeous. It was... Uh, um, a lot of people came out, um, and like like you were saying, Marty, uh, it's one of the things that we do is to, to kind of give back um, for everybody that supports us in the community or the area towns, and even in Minnesota, <clears throat> excuse me, not just in western Wisconsin, but also in Minnesota. People come from all over the place and just want to see a good, good night of racing. And so we do that every year at Memorial Day weekend, and it's such a fun time where people can come out and watch the races for free. And we did have a fantastic turnout for that, yeah. Fast forward now, we got the month of June. Yes. And we go back into CLS dash racing mm -hmm. along with, we got a kids night coming up as well. Yep, we got a couple weeks here now we have dash races, which means that's our point system that we carry at Cedar Lake Speedway. So the drivers that are there normally on a Saturday night 
um, they will be collecting points when they are um, when they're entering those races, uh, if, as it were. And um, so the first one's going to be this Saturday on the third, and then the tenth we come back with the same thing. Uh, but on the tenth um, we also have kids' night, and so on the kids' night on the tenth we are giving away a bunch of bikes, uh, lots of candy. So we're going to make a lot of the dentists happy in town, <laughs> and uh, that'll be really fun. So it's a really good time. Uh, for both the uh, uh, you know the, the, the kids that get to come whatever else so you know call up your neighbors whatever else if there's kids sitting around in the neighborhood and don't have anything to do pile in the back of the car and let them come out to the races. And I will fun. say this: Do you think kids? Most people probably think twelve and under, or ten and under. It's sixteen, mm -hmm. sixteen and younger. That's right. Get into the track free. So that's right. Kind of teenagers a little bit too, but obviously yeah, it's easy yeah. to say kids. But I think that's great. You I got, think a you lot got of tracks don't do that as much as they used to mm -hmm. and i think it's great that you guys open up the door to all these people to uh say hey let's go out to the races on a saturday night right at cedar lake speedway and yep. so yeah and that's june 10th i believe june, june 10th yep. yep june 10th so and then the following week we start our thursday friday saturday maybe even practice on wednesday <laughs> we'll have to see how the uh the, the season's going here but we'll probably have something on that wednesday night yeah and then we'll uh yeah, we kick it off with Thursday night. It's three thousand dollars to win for the USRA uh, modifieds, and then the late models also will run for three thousand dollars to win uh, on that Thursday. Then the following Friday, uh, we have the USMTS modifieds and our local late models running for both five thousand dollars to win. And then on Saturday, um, I'm not sure what the date would be. That would be the seventeenth. Uh, that'd, right. that'd be right, seventeenth. Um, they would run uh, both the USMTS modifieds and the lo our local late models will run for eleven thousand dollars to win. You guys just keep on throwing money into that bank yeah, I don't for these know drivers. Why. I, yeah, we're not smart. Sorry. <laughs> and I think too, the USRA late models might run with you guys. Yes, they do. On that Thursday night or yep. all three nights. Uh, I can look at the schedule right here. We got one right behind us, great. which is always handy. You can always check these out. All throughout these wonderful I should know our schedule. behind us. Uh, of course, so we got the Masters, and it's the 24th Masters, June 15th through the 17th, and the USRA late models run all three nights. Nice, yes, that's right, that's right, yep. yep. And it's always the 24th Masters, and I, to be a Cedar Lake Speedway fan growing up and everything, I remember being a kid and just loving when the Masters would come rolling into town, and there's been different layers of the masters to the year used to be mm -hmm. tied in with like the uh what would be what the ump hell tour yep. back in the day and yep. it was kind of off on its own and yep. the usmts was fully engraced in it and yep. it still is yep um I, it's great i think it's it's a fun way to kick off the summer if you're a big big race fan and you guys to have I would say, obviously, USMTS, some of the best modified drivers in the country. Very much. But bringing in the late models, and these guys come from all over the place, too, to show up for this race. You got right. five, six drive, five, six states in these late model classes. Yep. I mean, you got guys that they don't care about points. They just want to grab that money. That's right. And they come showing up to see the Lake Speedway. Well, and, the, and the one thing you know we talked about a little bit or briefly touched on is that when I'm talking about it's obviously to win for each of those nights, well, obviously, each one of those nights is a complete show. So the next night, so if a, a driver happens to have a bad night on a Thursday or night doesn't mean that that's going to ruin their their mm -hmm. their week weekend. They can come back Friday and Saturday and still you know earn lots of money or whatever else. So um, you know maybe fix their car or adjust something in their setup. And uh, so it's always always good to see guys uh, or gals for that matter uh, be able to make adjustments on the Thursday or Friday and then still come back for the Saturday and you know basically. You'll find some names that you just didn't weren't, weren't expecting to see on yep. Saturday. And then there's you look at a different layers too. Me as a fan, mm -hmm. I can't make it there Saturday, right? But I can still see a great show on Thursday night because right. it's a complete show, right. and I'm not going to miss stuff, right? Right. Or if I'm a driver, hey, I work my nine to five Monday through Friday. Right. The only night that I can race, I can roll my modified or my late model to the track at Cedar Lake Speedway on Saturday. That's right. And I'm not missing anything. And I think that's a great setup that you guys have done with the uh the 24th edition of the masters which is amazing to say that mm -hmm. it's been 24 years of uh great racing and it's always from that june timeline yeah and it kind of i feel for me it's always been kind of that that kickoff point for an amazing summer of what's to be expected at cedar lake speedway which yeah. has always uh always been a great time so we roll obviously masters and we get back into 
some more of the CLS dash, CLS dash racing. Yeah. And then we uh, roll to the World of Outlaws. Yeah. So I think between there, I think what did I see? We have one dash race between yep. there, and then uh, um, dash race number seven, I think, is basically on the on the card between yep. those two events. And then Saturday, June twenty fourth. Yeah. And then we come right back with the World of Outlaws sprint cars on uh, June thirtieth and July first this year. So. Um, just remember, remember that, excuse me, if, uh, you know, you're thinking about, we always have races in July. It's always been July timing. Well, it is, but it's actually June 30th this year and July mm -hmm. 1st. And it's all because of this leap year, wonderful thing that we have to deal with all the time. So, and that's a Friday, Saturday show. Cause in the past there's sometimes the outlaws when they show up in the town, it's been a, <laughs> a Sunday, Monday, it's been a Monday, Tuesday falling around the fourth, but this year yeah. yep. it's a Friday, Saturday. And I think that's been more consistent of of recent years now with the outlaws when they've come to Cedar Lake Speedway when mm -hmm. it's been more consistent of a, a Friday Saturday show right. I, mean, I remember being a child and being like it's Tuesday night July 4th or July 3rd we're gonna go to Cedar Lake Speedway yeah, yeah. Um, but as times have moved on the outlaws schedule seems to be a little more they like to know where they like to be and they like to spend more of their weekends yes. at home than they do uh, their weeks on the road which they do a little bit with World of Outlaws but yeah, yeah. Um, and they're traveling their way through the Midwest right now, I think, starting this weekend. And they kind of wrap up their upper Midwest spring, usually wait, right uh, at Cedar Lake Speedway mm -hmm. here um, mm -hmm. at the first part of July. So, Anything else, Brad, that you're thinking of? Here we got, um, uh, I've got a couple things. I've got a couple announcements. We've actually come out with one already. So the, um, our super stocks that we have at the racetrack, we have actually called them pro stocks for quite a few years. <laughs> um, but the super stocks are now going to be sanctioned with, with soda starting this weekend on June 3rd. And will be going forward for the rest of 2023. So if you are a super stock driver or know somebody that is a super stock driver, uh, let them know that if they were wanting to run for points and want to come to Cedar Lake, they definitely can uh, for the rest of the summer. Um, that would be fantastic for us to see some some faces that we probably haven't seen for quite a while. Um, that's the only class that we're going to be sanctioning this year for 2023, just FYI. Um, and then um, a couple, couple other updates. Um, we are still in the midst of um, revamping our pit area. The first thing um, that people will notice is that there's a, quite a bit of concrete being poured by where the pit stands used to be. Uh, that will continue probably for the next couple of weeks here and hopefully we will hopefully we'll be done by the masters i don't know if we will but um so and then we've got some new suites that we're building on the back stretch as well for the drivers um those are already purchased anyway but uh, um, those drivers that have had those for years we've kind of been um, hopefully carrying them forward here from a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. we tore our other ones down and now we're revamping and we, we're building new ones um, hopefully that will be done here soon as well um, and in addition to that, we also have in our pit, we are actually expanding our pit. So on the very western side, I think I've talked about this before, but if I haven't, uh, just you'll have to forgive me. Um, we're actually expanding our pit on the very western side. We're going to expand it out about 100 and some feet. Um, and so we're going to add some additional pit, sp pit spots as well. So the fence line that we have there along the very far west, that'll all come crashing down and we'll, we'll put up a new fence and whatever else. And then um, that'll be coming. Hope that We do expect to get that, um, I'd say, 90% complete. I don't know if we'll have the, all the concrete pads that we want to pour done by the mm -hmm. masters, but we're hoping to have all that done, as well as some retaining walls we want to have poured and stuff like that. And that'll also, be, that'll also help expand our souvenir alley. Um, so that's the number two project. And then the third project, we've kind of already glossed over a little bit, but our VIP is is totally been revamped and, and redone as well. So lots of projects, lots of stuff, and nothing better than a 55-year-old man struggling with pouring concrete at my age. It's, man, it just makes Maybe me... we'll have Dan go to the track the next time you're pouring, and then you can go to the CLS show and like and subscribe and have a video of you pouring <laughs> concrete. Oh, Chris, Chris, Chris is the man. I, yeah. I am just there as a... I'll run the flow. Yeah, yeah. The float back and forth. I would say back to the super stock thing. I think Cedar Lake Speedway has always done a good job, and also with your guys' advancements of the track. Mm -hmm. You guys have always done a good job of trying to advance or trying to find what the best thing's best for you guys in the current situation. Mm -hmm. Like you don't just find yourself in a pigeonhole and just stick with that and grind it, grind it out. If you see something that's going to be good for you mm -hmm. and the drivers and the fans, mm -hmm. I think you guys take advantage of that, and I always think you guys have done a nice job of trying to advance 
not only for the drivers, the fans, and the track. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's just an ever-evolving uh, process of trying to update, making constant updates to the racetrack. And um, uh, ever since I've come on full time, and Chris has been there for quite a few years too. Uh, I think we've made some pretty good strides the past few years for sure, and uh, we'll continue to do so as we go forward. So I think we've got some more things in the horizon as well, not just this year, but maybe this fall, maybe, uh, well, I definitely know it's something for next year. So yeah. we've got some more things in plan as well. And we still got the consistency. We got the Masters, you get the World of All Outs coming, and then eventually the USA Nationals. Yeah. And we've put the, uh, the annual school bus race to bed, and so you don't have to worry about driving buses all now over. I just got to go find more buses to buy. Okay, here we go. CLS show, like and subscribe, send them an email, let them know where some buses are at <laughs> for next year. <laughs> thanks again. Welcome to the, again to the, uh, thanks again for joining the CLS show. Uh, we'll see you guys down the road.